quick disclaimer, I made a small mistake in my last video where I said Yogurt Academy is Hungarian. Yogurt is not Hungary, it's Bulgaria, making the tanks they use not T-38s, but rather Czechada 38s. However, my point of them not adding a Czechoslovakian team still stands. By the start of World War II, Czechoslovakia was one of the biggest tank manufacturers and exporters in Europe. If you really wanted to reuse assets, then go with Czechoslovakia, they're the perfect team. All you have to do is color the Panzer 38T Alps B olive green or khaki brown, or give them a custom camouflage like you do with Maginot or BC Freedom. But instead, we get Bulgaria? You know what? Fuck it! I'm officially starting the For the Love of Cuck's Sake Replace Yogurt with Gregor, also known as the Futilokrsivrg. Together, we shall retcon yogurt, bringing on a new age of girls in Panzer that will circumnavigate the globe, and everyone will bow before our majestic light as we proudly defend our nation's honor. Our headquarters will be at the local forever dance in Ridgeway, Alaska. We will force the children to dance for our entertainment. Keyboard warriors, assemble! Now that I have that on my system, I'm proud to announce the history behind Das Finale 3. The episode opens up with Orai chasing Chiatan as both teams discuss strategy, with a discount Yoshitsugu Saito having a mental breakdown behind the fact that they had to retreat, while the French judge from afar, with Marie whining about wanting more cake. Don't be so cruel, Miss Azumi. Oh my god, shut up! Also, who the fuck brings a bathtub to watch a sport? As the match progresses, Yukari mentions that the match has gone on for 12 hours now. At this point, I'm just starting to think that these high schoolers are taking drugs. No one in their right mind can stay vigilant for that long. For all I know, they could be chugging 5 5 hour energies in order to unlock the forbidden hour of the day. Just look at Mako. If she's not on crack, then I don't know who is. Yukari and Miho discuss how Chiatan has changed with the presidential club, or rather, formal presidential club, talking about Monocle Girl wanting to get into university because the plot needs to remind us that there are actual consequences to losing. The perspective switches to the Japanese as Mini Grape Juice Girl gets scared and starts chanting Lover San. The Japanese devise a tactic which is meant to take out Orai's Panzer IV, mentioning that Anglerfish is the pillar that holds the entire Orai team together, and without them, the entire team will collapse. This can be a reference to god knows how many things, for example, Barbarossa, but given that this is the Japanese team we're talking about, I'm willing to place my $20 on that it's a reference to Pearl Harbor, where Japanese Admiral Isoroku Yamamoto thought that taking out the US's Pacific Fleet would make the US sue for peace, which we now know never came to pass, as the US dropped the power of the sun on the Japanese. Twice. As Ori closes the distance, we see Yukari using World War II German trench binoculars. When Ori gets within 100 meters of Chiatan, the Japanese fire an illumination round out of a flare gun, making Orai's formation completely visible. As this happens, Chiatan commits a hit-and-run tactic, causing chaos among Orai's ranks. I'm not going to go into every detail of the battle as 1. The battle is a complete cluster cuck, and 2. My original script was supposed to cover most of the battle, detailing exactly what happened, but then it just became narration, so instead I'm just going to focus on the big parts. Orai heads towards the riverbank, where they're confronted by one of the Kamis, which can somehow still float despite it losing most of its floaty bits. The Stuk 3 then knocks the Kami back into the water. Know your fucking place, trash! The second Kami and two Shinhoto Chihas engage the Panzer IV, forcing it to veer right into the jungle, with the Chihas following in pursuit. The Panzer IV turns around and heads back for a head-on charge. The Stuk 3 fires at the two Chihas, with one of them glancing a shot it couldn't, and the Panzer IV taking one of them out soon after. As the Panzer IV races back towards the riverbank, we get this scene. Which doesn't make any sense. How the fuck is this even possible? Also, isn't Senchido supposed to be safe? Do you know what would happen if she stuck her head out just a little bit in this situation? Three of Chiatan's tanks try to pursue by doing the same. However, the Kami can handle more than one at the same time. That's what she said! <laughs> With this, the chaos stops, giving Orai time to rethink strategy. We see the locations of Orai's tanks via a map, 
where we can see that the Panzer IV is completely isolated from the rest of the team. Orai, now knowing that Chiatan is primarily focusing their efforts on taking out the Panzer IV, allows the Type 89 to split off from the main group in order to track the enemy's flag tank. Orai's main group tries to cross a bridge, however, the two Kamis destroy it, stranding the Hetzer on the other side of the river. So, the Hetzer retreats back into the jungle. The Type 89 catches up with Chiatan's main force, however, the Hago realizes they're being followed and goes to intercept, only to find out that it's the volleyball club, whom she is very close friends with, much to the surprise of both tanks. This provokes a duel of the fates. Chiatan's main force finally gets across the river, once again using the Kamis as a bridge. Stop! He's already dead! The battle continues where both sides riddle each other down, with the Stug 3 getting taken out by volley fire, Miho and the gang pulling a sneaky on a Chiha. Surprise, motherfucker! The Chi Nu getting its ass whooped by two of the Kamis. And <laughs> Look familiar? And the M3 Lee knocking out one of the Kamis and trade killing with the other. Also, this happens. <laughs> Cutting back to the Panzer IV, Miho and the gang turn their headlights on, despite them acknowledging that it lights them up like a Christmas tree. Chiatan knows that the Panzer IV is attempting to lure them in, however, they push on anyways. Miho forces Existential Crisis Girl to switch positions with her, so she can spot, with Yukari taking her place as the driver. With this, they manage to evade multiple attacks, with Mako finding a way across the river. And then we get this scene. We then see a brief chase until the Japanese finally manage to take out the Panzer IV. They celebrate, but Grape Juice remembers that they put all their effort into taking out Miho and that they completely forgot about the enemy's flag tank. The match ends with Orai's Hetzer bursting out of the forest taking out Chiatan's flag tank as a result. Which could be another reference to Pearl Harbor, where the Japanese forgot, or rather missed, the US carriers, which ultimately cost them the war. If you don't believe me, just watch this. The plot continues, where our characters discuss how most of the senior students will be graduating. Damn, they're really giving Monocle Girl the finger, aren't they? Straight after, we finally get our first mini-battle of the episode, Kuro Morimine vs Pravda. The Germans are seen advancing towards the Soviets, who are dug in with their turrets sticking out. This is a reference to the Battle of Kursk, one of the biggest and most decisive tank battles of the Second World War where T-34s would dig in in a hold down position as the turret, especially on the 85 variant, was the most armored part of the tank, turning themselves into a sort of anti-tank bunker. Also, for some reason, in the English dub for this episode, they completely negate the fact that the two Vatniks are supposed to speak Russian, so instead, they just get them speaking English with a heavy Russian accent. I guess this is what you get for switching out half the voice actors. Also, they give them Japanese subtitles, which doesn't make any sense. You're making an English dub. If you want to do the whole guy with a heavy accent needs subtitles joke, like in some Squire skits, then put English subtitles. Mini Stalin yells at them for speaking in a heavy accent and orders the entire team to focus all fire on the mouse, with the Russian exchange student staying put as she's the flag tank. As the Germans advance, they manage to take out a T-34-76 with Pravda having difficulty trying to knock out the mouse. However, the KV-2 manages to knock it out via a shot trap. Also, Yukari's my spirit animal. They pulled off the shot trap! The Germans try to push on. However, Pravda manages to knock out the elephant and track the Ag Tiger. This causes the Germans to panic, with the Verabu girl having a flashback, sparking an idea. Erika parkours to the rearmost tank the Panzer III, and takes command of it, ordering three Panthers to follow her around the hill with the rest firing HE rounds to mask her advance. Mini Stalin, however, notices this, and she, with another T-3485, go to intercept as Miss Verabu and her platoon start advancing up the right flank of the hill. Stalin orders Russian exchange student to move out of position, however, she is unable to. 
Katusha and the other T-34 both destroyed the two Panthers blocking the Panzer III, with Katusha managing to take out another. However, she is unable to take out the Panzer III, and well... As the match ends, Stalin has a mental breakdown as per usual, while Miss Verabu celebrates. The second mini battle is Saint Gloriana vs Anzio, which is an obvious reference to Britain and Italy's rivalry during World War II. The battle is as one-sided as it gets, with Anzio only managing to take out one crusader via anime shenanigans. The match ends with Saint Gloriana's Matilda II shooting Anzio's flag tank from the rear. The third battle is Yaktosoda vs Saunders where we see a Finnish tank not previously seen, the T-26. Here's Private Fletcher to tell you more. The T-26 was a Soviet license-built variant of the British Vickers 6-ton, being almost identical to the original British design. The main difference between the T-26 and the Vickers 6-ton is the main gun, the T-26 using the Soviet 45mm 20K and the 6-ton using either two Vickers machine guns or a 47mm 3-pounder. The T-26 entered Soviet service in 1931 and they would make over 10,000 of them, being the most produced tank of the interwar, but they weren't the only ones interested in the Vickers. Finland ordered 32 6-tons from Vickers in 1936 even selecting it as their standard tank model, with some minor modifications such as changing the primary gun to a 37mm Bofors. Vickers didn't have the courtesy to actually send the tanks when the Finns wanted them. Finland only received 26 of the 32 tanks ordered before the Winter War started. So, when you're a small military, currently at war, and you don't have enough tanks, what do you do? You steer... Uh, <clears throat> borrow them. Finland captured around 114 T-26s from the invading Soviet forces and used them throughout the Winter War and Continuation Wars. In Girls and Panzer, Jatko Sota are seen using T-26Cs, also known as the T-26 Mod 1938. The Mod 1938 changed the shape of the turret, added an electric breech block, and a vertically stabilized sight. Technically, they are using reconfigured Soviet OT-133 flamethrower tanks, as you can see from the position of the turret being on the right instead of the left. Some OT-133s were captured and converted back into the standard T-26s by the Finns. So there is historical precedent, although it is interesting that they chose this variant in specific, rather than a standard T-26C. The match opens up with Saunders bombarding the finish. After Saunders knocks out four T-26s, Yaktosota retreats and hides, knowing that they can't face Saunders head on. While patrolling the airfield, K spots <laughs> With this, the BT-42 goes on a little bit of a rampage, taking out multiple Shermans before Saunders' reinforcements arrive. This forces the BT-42 to run away. However, unbeknownst to Saunders, there was a lurking threat in the forest above. Making Yak to Soda the winners of the quarterfinals. Ah, fuck, I wanted Saunders to win. Once again, the plot continues as we get to see Yak to Soda's school ship, which is a 19th century icebreaker, and the Turku Cathedral in the background. In the semi-finals, Ori is matched up with Yak to Soda. The match starts with both teams having to look for each other, with Tachinu being Ori's flag tank. The Finnish team spots them first and engages before swiftly retreating, which was an actual tactic used by Finnish soldiers during the Winter War, also known as Mati. Ori heads towards a small town to set up defensive positions, where they see a bunch of Frosty the Snowmen. The Finnish catch up to them and start engaging. This provokes most of Ori, except for the Chinu and Panzer IV, to stay behind. The Mark IV also stays behind because it's too slow. However, unbeknownst to Miho, 
there were several T-26s hidden inside the snowmen, causing the Panzer IV and Chinu to retreat. Whilst retreating, Yakusoda just denies the existence of the Mark IV. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine, when you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because they would never understand. While the Panzer IV goes ham. <laughs> Once they lose the T-26s, Existential Crisis Girl spots something 0.621371 miles out. Which doesn't make any sense, given that she's buttoned up and that German driver viewports only show directly front, but... Okay. The episode ends with a shot fired from the hill, as a round hits the engine deck of the Panzer IV, knocking it out. First of all, thank you so much for the support on the previous Death Finale video. I genuinely expected to receive a lot of hate, and expecting people to say that it's a disgraceful reboot of what Potential History did, and by all means, I'd agree with that. However, instead you guys embraced it, and I can't express my gratitude. Anyway, time for a small rant. Let's bring up the subject of sub versus dub, because we need to have that conversation. If you're new to the Girls in Panzer community, or any anime community, and you just so happen to mention that you enjoy the dub, you'll get pummeled by people saying that you're not allowed to enjoy the dub, and that you're not a real fan. Oh I'm sorry, I just don't want to spend 80% of my time reading while someone monologues about the holocaust. Yes, when it comes to voice acting, it's much better in Japanese, but when it comes to enjoyment, they're practically the same, given that you didn't do your daily Duolingo lesson. People tend to forget that the dub, especially in Girls in Panzer, has a lot to offer. For example, doing Australian accents for Koala Forest, and references to stuff that your average Japanese person wouldn't know, but your average American would. For example, Hana calling Johnny Depp my favorite cereal brand. Not to mention that the dub in Season 1 is not that bad. At worst, it's mediocre, and once we get to Dare Film and Das Finale 1 and 2, the quality of the dub has significantly increased. The only dub I have a problem with is in Dust Final 3, as for some reason they switched out half the voice actors, making it slightly jarring to listen to. Also, they gave Nona and Clara Russian accents, instead of making them speak Russian, but that also may have been due to unforeseen circumstances. People who criticize the dub of their respective anime always gatekeeps their entire fan base just because someone doesn't want to read subtitles while eating their third serving of orange chicken. It kind of reminds me of the tiger's tale, not gonna lie. Also, since it's Yukari's birthday, I'm gonna do this once. But only once. I'm not gonna do it again. I probably will. Yeah, ho, psycho, the Zach!